since India is usually a low-profile space agency, ISRO, an Indian space organization, suddenly had the spotlight pointed at it after the success of the Mangalyaan Mars mission. And since then, it had been constantly in the news, launching a record of 104 satellites, testing the crew model on the biggest GSLV MK3 rocket, testing the RLV of the reusable launch vehicle, and more recently about the Gangayan manned space mission to the moon. Now it intends to take on SpaceX, more specifically, the company's Falcon 9 reusable rocket. According to the report in Times of India, the agency is now focusing on the reusable rockets, the ISRO may be doing this to cut down on launch cost further. ISRO is also looking to test the vertical takeoff and the vertical landing of the VDBL technologies in what it is called as Admire Test Vehicle. According to ISRO's Dr. B. N. Suresh, the Admire Test Vehicle will prove the techs such as the retractable legs, retropropulsion and steerable fins. These technologies will help in the vertical landing the rocket back near the launch pad. The rocket will use other indigenous technologies in the navig navigation receiver so that it can accurately land on the designated spot. Dr. Suresh also said a test and a landing site is being developed by ISRO for this purpose only. But this isn't the only reusable technology that ISRO is working on. Last year, the agency test launched an RLV demonstrator, a reusable launch vehicle, a wing spacecraft like NASA's. It is meant to be launched vertical and after injecting the payload into the orbit, come back to the base for landing like an aeroplane. The RLV is supposed to undergo another test with the craft being dropped from a plane to verify its landing ability. The reusable launch crafts are all rage these days because they not only reduce the cost of the launch step into the space but also allows for more frequent launches than the expendable rockets. So what do you think of Isro gunning for Elon Musk's SpaceX Falcon 9, like a vertical landing reusable rocket? Will this be a biggest help for Isro's Indian Space Research Organization or this could be just a test flight before doing something with it? As India is moving US to the back seat, as India becomes the fastest growing country in the last five years. In Geneva, India's air connectivity has grown the fastest in the last five years and there is a strong strength and growth ahead in terms of domestic passenger numbers, though there are infrastructure challenges according to the global airlines body IATA or the International Airport Transport Association. India is the fastest growing domestic aviation market in the world, and IATA's chief economist Brian Pierce said. The country registered double digit growth in the domestic aviation market for 58th consecutive month in October. An analysis by the International Airport Transport Association or the IATA showed that the air connectivity grew the fastest in 114% in the five year period from 2013 to 18. Many of the market where connectivity has grown fastest, unsurprisingly, are in the Asia, India, China, and Indonesia. The grouping said in the presentation during the Global Media Day here in Geneva. As per the IATA, which is a grouping of around 290 airlines, connectivity is the extent to which a country is integrated into the global airport and transport network. In recent years, Many foreign as well as the Indian carriers have commenced flight to and from various Indian cities. About domestic passenger growth, Pierce told that there is a strong growth ahead, but the challenges with infrastructure is that the airports are crowded. We needed more terminals and runway capacity. We have seen concessions for many airports leading to large rise in airport charges. On steps being taken in India to address infrastructure issues, he said additionally capacity is being put in place and some very good modern airports being built which is a real positive in 2005 to 2014. 
I think that the cost of using those airports is high. The peer said it is because the economic regulations have not been strong as we would have hoped because the concession agreements were made with very large royalties. The lessons for the future is to be provide good infrastructures because more is needed but an affordable rate, he noted. IATA's director Hemant Mistry said the historical airport concessions have suffered from unduly long and attributory concession lengths. These can be for benefit of governments and the concessionary. We have seen many examples of very high concession fees where a large proportion of gross revenue of the airport is diverted to the government and not necessarily reinvested back into the aviation. According to him, there are also examples where concessions are negotiated with fixed set pricing over the concession term, which risks a situation where the charges are not reflective of the service or infrastructure provided to the airlines and passengers. So what do you think of India pushing back US and China and became the fastest growing connectivity in airline services in the world? President Donald Trump alleged joke he could play a matchmaker for Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, after learning from AIDS that the 67-year-old Indian leader has long been extracted from his wife, according to a new report in Politico. The article detailed a long list of diplomatic fox pass the Trump has made with foreign leaders around the globe, including a lack of telephone adequate, mispronunciations, and awkward meetings. So we want fair trade deals. We want reciprocal trade deals. Uh, Scott Walker has a wonderful company called Harley Davidson in Wisconsin, right? Great. So when they send a motorcycle to India, as an example, they have to pay 100 percent tax, 100 percent. Now, the Prime Minister, who I think is a fantastic man, called me the other day. He said, we are lowering it to 50 percent. I said, okay, but so far we're getting nothing. So we get nothing, he gets 50, and they think we're doing like they're doing us a favor. That's not a favor. And you know what I'm talking about. It's a great company. Trump also displayed a lack of familiarity with South Asia, according to a report. Ahead of the meeting last year with Prime Minister Modi at the White House, Trump alerted studied a map of South Asia and mispronounced Nepal as Nepal and refer to Bhutan as Bhutan, the Politico said, according to unnamed sources. The president seemed confused that the two countries which borders India even existed, said a new report. He didn't know what those were. He thought it was all part of India, a source told to Politico. Also, he was like, what is this stuff in between and these other countries? After Trump's staffers told the president that Prime Minister Modi would not bring his wife along to the meeting at the White House, Trump alleged a joke that, ah, I think I can set him up with somebody else. The report said according to two people briefed on the meeting. White House spokesperson Sarah Huckabee Sanders told the Politico that the Trump has developed strong relationship with America's closest allies, which allow for a candid conversation. Pleasure to have you here, Tony. Well, Justin, it's been really great, and I appreciate, you know, uh, Justin has agreed to cut all tariffs <laughs> and all trade barriers <laughs> between Canada and the United States. So uh, I'm very happy so about I'd say that. NAFTA's in good shape. But we are actually working on it. We are actually working on it. But uh, our relationship is very good. We are actually working on cutting tariffs and making it all very fair for both countries. Although India and the U.S. relationship are basically sounded, things have been tense in recent months because of the clashes on the trade and the administration decision to cancel an important meetings of US Secretaries of Defense and stayed with their respective Indian counterparts. It is now scheduled for September 6, 2018. Prime Minister Modi has invited Trump to be the chief guest at the India's Republic Day military parade on 2019 January 26, but there is no word yet whether the president will accept, more or less Trump of United States as a president won't come. So what do you think of the insults and the jokes about 
and mocking of Indian Prime Minister Modi by the President of US Mr. Donald Trump. Post your comments below and if you like this video please give a thumbs up and follow us on social networks and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching. This is WEC Daily. Think big, think different. Bye.